first of all, these kind of fires are very hard to prevent because you're processing electronic waste, which contains battery storage systems. And the issue is you take electronic waste apart, often it is shredded, and it's very easy to miss a storage unit in a system because they can be extremely small, but even the smallest one can create a fire. And let me elaborate a little bit on what is actually the cause of a fire. So a no, let, let's take a normal phone like mine. It has a battery inside. It operates between 25 to 60 degrees maximum. When it reaches 60 degrees, you will feel that your phone is hot and it shuts off. That is a safety feature because after that temperature, if you reach higher temperatures, the battery becomes unstable. Um, at around 100 degrees, eh, you already have decomposition of the electrolyte. That's the liquid in the battery. And at a 150 degrees, you have something that's called a thermal runaway, a thermal situation where the battery is permanently out of control and you can't do anything anymore. And let's make one thing clear. A battery fire cannot be extinguished. The only thing you can do is cool it and try to prevent um, propagation to other parts of the battery system or to other batteries in the surrounding area. And most people think you can stop a fire. You can't. It's only thing you can do is try to have a controlled fire. The other way of creating a thermal runaway is damaging a battery. So if you puncture it or stab it, you have a connection of the plus and the minus, create temperature, et cetera, so on and so forth. And overcharging, but that's not an issue here, overcharging with the, diff the, the wrong currency, like the wrong voltage, is also a risk. So those three issues create a battery fire. So when a fire starts, at 150 degrees, the battery goes thermal. And at that point, the electrolyte inside the battery is already decomposing. It's like cooking water at 100 degrees, you get water vapor. That's fine. But the battery has, doesn't have water in it, it has electrolyte in it, which is a chemical compound containing of several materials. When you start to basically cook the liquid, it separates into gases and ashes. And the gases are extremely toxic. Uh, to give you an example, like when you start, you have a buildup of gases that come out and people start to put water on the batteries. You see white vapor coming out at often that happens. People mistake that white vapor actually for vapor of the water, but it's not. It's uncombusted um, THC products, meaning methane, ethane, but it also contains uh, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, carbon monoxide. This is extremely explosive gases, dangerous, because people mistake it for water vapor. But one spark, you had a big boom, that's one. Then you got the gases coming out of the battery itself. And they're toxic, really, really toxic. So you got nitrous dioxide, that's bad, but, right? but then it gets worse. Hydrogen chloride comes out of it, deadly. Hydrogen cyanide, extremely deadly hydrogen fluorides come out of it these are the gases that you see come out of a battery on top of that you got the gases decomposition of the plastic material around the battery and that is for instance dioxins furans and vocs which stands for volatile organic compounds also not such nice products one of the parts you often see inside these materials is PVC. And PVC, when you burn it, you get hydrogen chloride. Dangerous, toxic, corrosive. You also have hydrogen cyanide coming from PVC and other products. So the whole combination is lethal, really lethal. Plastics, you can actually extinguish because it's, it's, it's a product on its own. Um, if you take the heat away at the burn triangle, you can extinguish it. But the batteries, they're on thermal runaway. So it's basically a fusion reaction inside. And the only thing you can do, you cannot stop it. You can slow it down and reduce it by cooling it. And 
if all the toxic gases are is not deadly enough, there's another component, the ashes coming out of the batteries. That includes mangane, cobalt, nickel, and lithium, which are expelled into the environment. If you breathe it in, it can cause cancer. If it falls down on the surrounding area, like the fields, it, cre it creates pure pollution for the environment, which is non-degradable. It doesn't go away anymore. So yeah, a lithium battery fire combined with plastics from uh, electronic waste, a massive problem. Yes, correct. And there's not much you can do other than to extinguish the plastic fire and try to reduce and control as much as you can the battery fire. But after that, what we can do now with the consequences, with that harmful consequences as a state or as a citizen, what we have to, to do? Oh. Let's first start with the fact how you shut it down, because you've seen you used water, you told me you used sand. Uh, if you bury it in sand, um, there is still the opportunity that there is oxygen inside. And the batteries, they can, they can go volatile on their own. They do not need oxygen. So there's a very big risk that inside there is still a high temperature and the, the, the whole pile of sand of rubble is still emitting toxic gases at this moment without you actually realizing it because they're not visible anymore, but they are coming out. So that's number one. The material on the inside now is a massive heap of chemical waste. And the issue is there's still batteries in there. We don't know what condition they are. So by excavating them, you can restart the fire. So it's an extremely dangerous situation. You need to act excavate it and process it. The best thing you can do is chemical recycling, because if you burn it, you admit the gases and the materials through the exhaust of the burning system into the open air, even though they got filtration systems on there. Most of the gases coming out of it pass right through it. The surrounding land is polluted. You cannot grow any food for, for a long time. You need to do a full remediation of the entire area around it. The water quality, you, you put water on there, and that's logical to cool it. Um, but by doing so, you washed out the particle matter like nickel, mangane, cobalt, the whole lot of them. Uh, you washed it into the surrounding areas, so and also into the water, in the water levels. So yeah. It is polluted. This is a large chemical pollution area now, which requires specialists to clean it up. It's not just dig it away and you're okay. It can spread quite fast through the water, uh, the water table underneath underneath the ground, and it can carry a long way. Yes. So this is a huge environmental issue. When you design a processing facility for batteries, it's important to have in place certain um, pre-designed safety measures like um, separation walls, um, basically store the waste in a concrete bunker and not in an open floor where the water can flow away, control the water flow that goes in there, but also contain the water flow. So the best thing you can do is when you design a facility, look at the actual design from a safety perspective. And there's a, a load of measures you can put into place to prevent escalation if it does go wrong. Because with these facilities, the chance that it will go wrong is actually quite high, yes. Long-term consequences for the environment, long-term consequences for the inhabitants of the area, the people that live there, um, because the water is contaminated, the soil is contaminated, and if they have been breathing in the air from the smoke, uh, the polluted air, yeah, that's that's seriously damaging. Let, let, let me give you an example. If I take this battery, this, if I take this phone, this iPhone, if I smack it up and get it to go thermal, I need to stay at least 40 meters away with breathing systems, at least. The fire you've been looking at, uh, the evacuation area would have been hundreds and hundreds of meters because of the temperature, because of the smoke. 
and the polluted area yeah that depends on how much water was dropped on there where did the water go did it seep into the ground how deep is the water level did it reach the water level and the smoke in what direction did the smoke go to determine where the soot the particle matter have come down if you're lucky the smoke the, the wind direction was in one direction and not that heavy then you have a limited contamination being well a couple of kilometers uh, before it come down because the the, the 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 particles is heavier than air so it will land quicker than normal but if the if the wind was stronger it can carry the particle matters much further and as such also the pollution of the land much further same with the water levels if you have a high water level and for instance you have a water flow underneath the area the pollution of the water can be extensive but it depends fully on the local situation which i'm not fully aware of so yeah and full land remediation is mandatory recycling of products like batteries like plastic waste is extremely important and it actually it will help you make waste become a benefit instead of a burden because if you're loading waste onto a landfill it becomes a burden it costs money if you recycle it you can make money that is very good but it's important that if you do it What's you on? do it with the right knowledge in the background on how to design such a facility and that's specifically one of our expertises because yeah there's a lot of additional dangers that people are not aware of 